love this song. Going back a year or two, I was a freshman in high school. My wife snickered at that. That's bad when your wife snickers at you. Uh, I was a freshman at Faith Baptist School in Williamsburg, Ohio. This was one of the first memory verses we had learned, Psalm 100. And uh, uh, I never have gotten over this psalm. The Bible says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in the house of God again tonight. We sure do thank you for God's people, folks that have come out on a rainy, stormy night, and have come out with a sweet spirit in them, come out with an attitude to worship. Lord, we certainly do appreciate it. God, thank you for the good singing. Our hearts were blessed during the singing. God, thank you for good testimonies as folks began to brag and thank the Lord for your goodness. God, we could have been here all night and everybody truly could have said something. Lord, of praise unto God. God, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness and tender mercy towards us. God, I'm glad, as Brother Phil said, that, Lord, you even give us time of day. We're not worthy of that. But, God, because we've been robed in your righteousness, washed in your blood, sealed by the Spirit of God, uh, been made joint heirs to the throne of Christ. Uh, you told us to boldly come to the throne of grace. We can find help in time of need. Uh, God, we have access to you because we have a mediator, a high priest, uh, an intercessor, the Lord Jesus, uh, who loveth to make intercession for us, uh, and he liveth to ever make intercession for us. Uh, God, I'm glad even as fragile as life is, uh, we've got a rock of ages that we can build our life on. Uh, Father, I'm glad for uh, 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 the truth of thy word. I'm glad for the precious promises contained therein. Uh, God, I'm glad that there's still a remnant of people that love you, want to serve you, want to worship you. God, I'm glad uh, uh, across this globe, uh, here and there, you've got churches that are doing something for God, uh, a people that loves you, wants to see revival, uh, wants to see sinners saved by the good grace of God. Uh, God, I'm glad God's people are the greatest people on the face of the earth. Uh, Lord, it's good to be counted amongst them tonight. Uh, Father, I do pray uh, for those that are working with the teens uh, on the other side. God, you'd bless their efforts. Uh, God, you'd help those young people. Uh, Lord, you alone know uh, uh, how wicked the devil is uh, and how he uh, ensnares and traps young people in this day and age. Uh, and I thank you for our young people. Uh, God, I pray that you'd insulate them. Uh, you'd protect their precious minds. Uh, God, you'd put something in them uh, that, Lord, would help them to stand in the evil day. Uh, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Uh, now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes. Uh, God, you'd continue to walk through this place. Uh, Lord, you'd use this unworthy vessel. Uh, God, I pray if anybody's lost without God, uh, today'd be the day of their salvation. Uh, God, I pray they'd run to an altar of repentance, uh, get right with the Lord. Uh, God, I pray for your people. Uh, Lord, they'd learn to live uh, above the stakes and the rudiments they placed in this whole world. Uh, God, they'd learn to live as Christ. Uh, they'd learn to live as every day might be their last day. Uh, God, they'd live it to the fullness of the glory of God. Uh, now, Father, bless, uh, help us. Uh, we'll bless your name for it, for it's in the wonderful uh, and holy and glorious name of the Lord Jesus. We ask these things. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. In this psalm, uh, we find some wonderful, wonderful things. Uh, 
First of all, notice the action uh, that is demanded. Uh, we find in verse number 1, uh, he doesn't make it a request. Uh, he makes a commandment here. Uh, he didn't say, if you feel like it, uh, he said, be instant in, in season or out of season. Uh, he said, make uh, a joyful noise uh, unto the Lord, uh, all ye lands. He's talking to the nation of Israel. Uh, he says, from every tribe, uh, from every kindred, uh, from every people, uh, uh, make it a, an absolute uh, priority in your life uh, to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Uh, can I say the Lord inhabits the praise of his people? Uh, hey, God's been better to all of us than we deserve. Uh, hey, we ought to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Uh, it doesn't matter what man thinks about it. Uh, doesn't matter if man's pleased with it. Uh, uh, we ought to uh, uh, raise our hands toward heaven uh, and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, we find there is an action demanded. Uh, you know, if more of us would make a joyful noise unto the Lord, there'd be less sinning going on in the world. We see the action demanded. Notice the attitude for success. It says, Serve the Lord uh, with drudgery. Is that what it says? Can I say I'm glad I've come to a church where folks got a smile on their face? Sure. I've been in some churches, they look like being saved was the worst thing could ever happen to you. It looked like their theme song was, oh, we, oh, oh. I mean, it's terrible. Oh, he says, serve the Lord with gladness. Can I say uh, again, we're faring better than we deserve. The Lord's been good to us. Uh, we ought to have no sad tale. Uh, we ought to have no sad song. Uh, uh, we ought to say, uh, uh, the Lord is the best thing that ever happened to us. Uh, he said, serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Can I say Isaiah 61.3 says, there's a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I know that there are some days you have bad days. I know there are some days you face things you not thought you'd never face. Uh, and I know tragedy is a part of life. Uh, uh, but can I say this? Uh, 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 long before you ever face that, God's put a song in your heart. Uh, and if you uh, uh, learn during the dark days and during the hard times to go ahead and sing unto the Lord, uh, He'll lift your spirit. Uh, He'll help you. Uh, and if we'd ever learn to come to the house of God, uh, not complaining, uh, not looking to find fault, uh, but if we'd come to the house of God with a song of praise in our heart uh, and we'd come singing and praising God uh, and come to serve him with gladness our services would be a whole lot different uh, Amen, I remember a time and my aunt Lynn sitting right there she'll back me up I remember a time you'd come into church house and there's already people gathered around a piano and somebody picking out a song and they'd be just singing and next thing you know, more people get to singing. Next thing you know, uh, 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 everybody come in broke out and singing. Uh, uh, we didn't have announcements. Uh, uh, we didn't have somebody leading silent prayer. Uh, we didn't have anything else, but folks started singing. Uh, next thing you know, folks got to worshiping. Uh, uh, the next thing you know, God would set in on that thing. Uh, uh, there was a lot of times uh, I saw uh, uh, where God would show up uh, and the man of God just take off of preaching. Uh, folks get saved. Uh, uh, folks get right with God. Hey, why? Because somebody came to the house of God with a song in their heart. Uh, yeah, that ought to be our attitude. And if we're ever going to have an attitude of prosperity for God or success in our Christian life, you've got to get a song in your heart and learn to sing it, whether the sun's shining or not. Uh, but we ought to be glad to serve the Lord. Huh? I'm glad I'm not in a sinning business tonight. Can I say, we also find that there is an acknowledgement that is required. Look at verse 3. No. Didn't say guess about this thing. Didn't say hope. Didn't say uh, try and figure it out. He said, you better know this. He said, know ye that the Lord, he is God. There ought to be no question in our heart who God is. Uh, we ought to know who the Lord Jesus Christ is. Uh, we ought to know the voice of the person of the Holy Ghost. Uh, we ought to know who our Heavenly Father is. Uh, he says, Know ye that the Lord, uh, He is God. Uh, it is He that had made us. We didn't come from monkeys. Uh, hey, uh, we didn't just show up and then get to choose our gender. Uh, God made you, uh, and you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, God fashioned you with His own hands. Uh, there's nobody else like 
like you. Uh, uh, God made you. Uh, you ought to know that uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Uh, it doesn't matter what scientists believe. Uh, it doesn't matter what professors teach. Uh, it doesn't matter what this wicked world says. Uh, I know who God is. Uh, and I know He's the one that formed me in the womb. Uh, he says, no. Ye that the Lord he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. Uh, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Uh, what a blessing when folks know who their maker is. What a blessing when they come to know him as Savior and they realize they're one of his and they're sheep of his pasture. Huh? Can I say his sheep know his voice and they follow him. Huh? Can I say he leads his sheep beside the still waters and in the green pastures. Uh, I'm glad I'm one of his sheep. What a blessing, huh? And then also notice the appreciation to be exhibited. Look again in verse number four. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Hmm? Did you come tonight to the house of God with thanksgiving in your heart? Let me help you with something. Thanksgiving isn't just something we celebrate in November. We ought to be thankful every day. But we're to enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Uh, be thankful unto him and bless his name. Sure. Now again, we find in 1 Corinthians 14, not everybody here could have a song tonight. Not everybody could have a testimony. Not every preacher, and we got some great preachers in here, not every preacher could get up and preach tonight. I mean, we could, but this service would last till Friday. No? Huh? But can I say that not all of us can because if we all did, that'd be confusion. Huh? We got to do as the Spirit of God directs. Huh? But we ought to come ready to be thankful, ready to bless His name, ready to do whatever He tells us to do. Not every service has God laid on my heart to open the floor for testimonies. Not every service has God laid on my heart to open for who's got a song. Sometimes God puts somebody in my heart to sing and I ask them to sing and they sing. Uh, 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 but listen, uh, we ought to all be ready for whatever God wants. I came about this close. I didn't want to see him lose the rest of his hair, but I came about this close tonight to ask Brother Ron to preach about five or ten minutes before I got started. I, I, just, I, was, I was sitting there asking God. I just kind of crossed my mind and said, God, was that the will of God? And then he got up and testified for about five minutes, so it all worked out. huh? No, I did. I was seeking God. Yeah, let me help you. This ain't about me. It's about what God wants. Uh, and I was sitting there. I didn't want to be out of the will of God. And if it's God's will for the man to fall on Brother Ron, uh, I'd have said hallelujah. And I'd have sat there and I'd have egged him on. Because uh, uh, I want to follow what God says. Well, uh, but there is an appreciation to be exhibited. Uh, you know, if you learn to be thankful... You'll not, ever have, not only have a better quality of life, you'll have a longer life. Because uh, unthankfulness breeds bitterness and brings anger and brings a lot of stuff in your life uh, that'll clog your arteries. Uh, uh, but then I want you to notice the argument for doing these things. The argument for making a joyful noise, an argument for uh, uh, serving him with gladness, an argument for knowing and acknowledging who he is, and an argument uh, 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 for entering his courts with thanksgiving. Let me show you the whole argument for it all. Verse 5. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Uh, we find he's good. That's enough right there. Can I say he's good? Uh, can I say he's great and greatly to be praised? Uh, uh, the psalmist said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Uh, he's good. Uh, therefore, we ought to serve him with gladness. Uh, we ought to have a thankful heart. Uh, we ought to praise him. Uh, uh, he's good. Uh, not only that, he's gracious. Uh, his mercy uh, is everlasting. Uh, I'm glad he'll never run out of mercy. Uh, I'm glad he'll never run out of grace. Uh, I'm glad that's my God tonight. Uh, and we find uh, his goodness uh, and his grace uh, is to all generations. Uh, I'm glad he didn't run out uh, right before my generation. Uh, and I'm glad if time goes on, uh, my grandbaby's going to know uh, God 
God's good uh, and God loves her uh, and God's got grace for her. Uh, hey, I'm here to tell you, uh, we've got a reason to bless his name. Uh, and I want to preach on this thought, what a God, uh, what a God. Uh, he's a good God. Uh, he's a gracious God. Uh, he's a God that's truth. Uh, spread to all generations. Uh, can I say he's a God that forgives sin? Uh, I say blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, hey, he didn't just whitewash me. Uh, he washed me white as snow. Uh, I'm glad he forgave me all sin. Uh, I'm glad every, every stinking sin uh, that I ever committed, uh, that I will commit, uh, he's done forgive me. Uh, he's a God whose blood uh, wash me uh, and cleanse me uh, from all sin. Uh, I say, what a God. Uh, hey, Buddha can't forgive you of your sin. Uh, Mahama can't forgive you of your sin. Uh, the Pope can't forgive you of your sin. Uh, but Jesus can. Uh, what a God. Uh, he's a God that forgives all sin. Uh, can I say he's a God uh, that fails not? Uh, he's never failed. Uh, He's never come up short. Uh, he's never come to a point where he wrung his hands uh, and said, it's too big for me. Uh, he's a God uh, that faileth not. Uh, I fail him every day. Uh, but in 49 years of knowing him, uh, he's never failed me. Uh, I say, what a God. Uh, hey, he's a God uh, that doesn't forsake his own. Uh, hey, uh, there's been times when people have turned their back on me. Uh, there's been times when people have walked out on me. Uh, but Jesus never has. Uh, there's never been a time uh, when I didn't crawl up into his lap. Uh, that he didn't have enough time for me. Uh, that he didn't speak peace to me. Uh, that he wasn't good to me. Uh, he doesn't forsake his own. Uh, Paul said, all men forsook me. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the Lord stood with me. What a blessing. Uh, he doesn't forsake his own. Uh, I say, what a God. Uh, he's a God that fights all my battles. Uh, hey, uh, David said, you come to me with spirit and sword. Uh, I come to you in the name of the Lord. Uh, I'm glad we got a God uh, that fights all our battles. Uh, hey, many times I don't even know who the enemy is. Uh, but God does. Uh, and he does the fighting. Uh, all I get to do is do the praising, uh, do the thanking, uh, do the serving with gladness. Uh, and God uh, takes care of me. Uh, can I say this? What a God. Uh, he feeds me uh, and supplies every need. Uh, there's never been a time uh, I ever had a need uh, that he didn't come through and meet those needs. Uh, what a God. Uh, we sitting on the back patio last night. Miss Taya brought Ella Rose over. She finally got right with God and brought my grandbaby over to see me. <laughs> Hadn't seen her in about 24 hours. She didn't like that. She got a little upset. <laughs> well, I was sitting there on the porch or the patio or whatever that thing is out back, and I was looking at all the birds. And you know God feeds every one of them. We got a dove that builds a nest underneath our whatever that thing's called in the back. I don't know what they call them things, gazebo or whatever it is. And this dove every year builds a nest in there. And last night one of them birds flew out of there, the baby bird, and flew into our glass win uh, sliding glass window, hit the ground. Miss Net thought it was dead, broke its neck and all this, and she's want me to pick it up. I ain't picking up that stinking thing. It's probably got lice or something. I ain't picking that up. <laughs> and it flopped over underneath the hostas, uh, and it flopped over to the fence, and then it took off flying. But I sit there thinking, how's that baby bird whose mama has brought it every worm it's ever eat? How's that baby bird know where to go to find food? Because God's put that in that bird. And God will feed that bird. God will take care of that bird. 
Can I say he takes care of the grasshoppers and the flies and the mosquitoes that find me and eat off of me. Uh, God takes care of all the animal kingdom. Uh, but God takes care of all of mankind. Uh, can I say uh, uh, sinners that cuss him and blaspheme him. Uh, the Bible says he lets it rain on the just and the unjust alike. Uh, but one thing about a privilege of being a child of God. Uh, hey, he's never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. Uh, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Uh, and can I say, uh, there's never been a time my cupboards have been bare when I didn't have anything to eat. Uh, there's never been a time that bills came uh, that he didn't make a way that they were paid for. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, there's never been a sickness uh, that he didn't show up. Uh, can I say, there's never been a time uh, where he did not meet every need. Uh, Amen. Back a long time ago, when I first started pastoring, most of you know, I worked in the corporate world. Can I say this? When I worked in the corporate world, we didn't depend on God. Every payday, Miss Nett got a new dress, and all we had was Jordan, and we spoiled him rotten. I didn't ever have to ask God for anything. I got big checks every two weeks. And every quarter, I got a big bonus. I didn't depend on God. Uh, but then God winked at my ignorance and he called me to pastor a little church and I'll never forget Brother Ray you told me this later your dad after that first time I preached down there your dad said we'll never get him remember when he told you that he said we can never afford him well the next time I preached his dad it must have been eating at him Brother Sherman come up and said Brother Doug if God calls you here, we could only afford to pay you $150 a week. Now, I'm not bragging, but $150, we used to blow that on nothing. $150 a week, he said, that's all we could afford to pay you. And I told him this, I said, if God calls me here, God will take care of it. But see, I'd never depend on God. But then God called me down there. And I preached on faith for about nine years, but I learned to live by faith. Uh, and Seth, I'll tell you, God's faithful. And he's true. I'll never forget Brother Ray. He had Ray Roberts instruction at the time. That consisted of Ray and Ray and Ray. And he let me help him do a little work. I was a little labor. All he did was take me places where I'd get hurt. That's all he did. <laughs> Put nails out for me to step on. I'd have to go to the hospital because I had a good tetanus shot and had a wire come off, hit me in the eye, and I had to go get that taken care of and everything. I was an accident waiting to happen on a job site. It's what race. Took me one place, and there's this big old yeller dog out there in race. I said, oh, that dog won't bother you. We picked up some material. First thing that dog did was latch on the back of my thigh. I'm dragging that dog all around. Ray said, well, he's never done that before. Well, he did it then. He looked at my little, little skinny legs and said, chicken bone, boom. I'll never forget. That one January, Ray didn't have any work. And... It was getting toward the end of the month. Miss Nett come to me and says, we need 600 and something dollars to get out of the month. I told her, I said, well, God's just going to have to send it. Was, Brother Ray didn't have any work, and I didn't have any way to get 600 and something dollars. And there was snow on the ground. I'll never forget. And I had an insurance man call me. He said, preacher, what are you doing? I said, sitting around the house. He said, can you come to my office? Now, that wasn't unusual because his insurance man would call every now and then and adjust some things and do some things. So I just showed up at his office. And he's just small talking me. I'm thinking, what am I doing here? You know, he could have small talked on the phone. He said, Preacher, the Lord woke me up today and told me to give you this. And he slid a check across the desk. And when I got out to the car and looked at it, it was 600. It was almost to the penny what we needed to get out of the month. Oh. Uh, Amen. And just like God, because God doesn't just give you what you need. While I'm talking to him, he says, Preacher, do you like ribs? Oh, do I like ribs? I said, yeah, I like ribs. And he gave me a gift card to Montgomery Inn. So Miss Nett and I could go to Montgomery. Not only did he get me out of the month, he gave me ribs. What a blessing. Amen. What I'm saying is, what a God. 
He's always taking care of me. He's always fed me. He's always supplied every need. Uh, I'll never forget when we moved in this building. There were folks thinking, how are we going to heat this thing? Uh, how are we going to pay the bills? How are we? And uh, I, I remember guy said, well, God's the one setting the building. He'll take care of it. Uh, they say, well, I know that, but aren't you worried? No, uh, uh, that's God's business. Uh, God's well able to take care of things. Uh, I, I'm just to serve him with gladness. Uh, I'm just to come to his courts with thanksgiving. Uh, I'm just to praise and bless his holy name. Uh, hey, uh, know ye it's God uh, that made you. Uh, I've acknowledged the fact that I'm his. Uh, and there's no place he'll guide me that he can't provide. Uh, we was in Grenada a couple of weeks ago. You asked Miss Annette. There were people in that town where we were staying. They were, they were full of the devil. And you go by and they just stare at you with a demonic stare. You say, preacher, was you fearful of your life? Uh, I'd just soon go to heaven from Grenada as from America. Are you listening? What can I say? I didn't fret about my life. I didn't fret about anything because I know God is in control. Yeah. What a God. Uh, and I say, He feeds and supplies. Can I say this? God fills us with joy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how He does it. But he's got a way of popping us open uh, and pouring out uh, a kettle full of it. Uh, and he can fill us with joy uh, and it bubbles over uh, out of the cup into the saucer. Uh, only God can fill you with joy. Uh, the joy of the Lord's our strength. Uh, and when David had sinned against God uh, and he got right with God in Psalms 51, uh, he said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uh, there's nothing like being saved uh, and there's nothing like the joy of the Lord uh, and God knows how to fill us up uh, oh what a God uh, can I say God filters our storms we had one blow through here a little bit ago uh, but I want to tell you uh, uh, God knows uh, how to uh, uh, protect you uh, put a hedge about you uh, he knows what you can and cannot handle uh, and God will not put more on you than you're able to bear uh, and with temptation he'll make a way of escape uh, God filters our storms uh, what a God uh, hey God focus on and hears every prayer uh, hey uh, there are times I can ask people to pray and they don't remember uh, but there's never a prayer that God uh, gets that he doesn't only remember it uh, but he hears it uh, and he answers it uh, and he records it uh, and there's vials before the throne of God uh, that the prayers of the saints uh, are smoked before his nostrils uh, a sweet smelling savor uh, what a God uh, can I say God's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother what a blessing what a friend we have in Jesus oh what a friend uh, when you're lonely you're never alone because you got a friend that goes with you everywhere you go. Can I say, uh, he's a God. That's a burning fire in our heart. Mm, old Jeremiah said, uh, I've had enough. Uh, I'm not going to preach anymore in his name. Uh, I'm going to not make mention of his name anymore. I'm done. Uh, but he said there in Jeremiah 29, uh, but there was a fire uh, burning in my heart uh, and I could not stay uh, I'm glad when we can't take another step uh, when we don't have another uh, verse of a song uh, when we don't have another scripture to quote uh, and we're done uh, there's a burning fire down deep inside uh, that causes us to step on uh, causes us to sing on uh, causes us to preach on uh, oh what a God uh, has a fire uh, that burns in our heart. Uh, can I say our God is a fresh drink of water in a desert land? Uh, can I say, you look around this sin-cursed world, and if you're saved, you don't feel at home in this world. You look around this world, and even sinners know something's about to happen. But can I say, no matter how dry this world gets, no matter how isolated we feel, no matter how far the oasis is away, we always got a fresh drink of living water that bubbles up within uh, because we've drinking from the fountain of the Lord. Uh, can I say this? What a God. Uh, can I say he's always the fourth man in the burning fiery furnace? Huh? Hey!
Hey, uh, there's never anything you go through. He's not already there waiting on you. Uh, and whoa, even when the world looks in uh, and expects to see the end of us, uh, accepts to see, uh, expects to see us consumed, uh, they look in uh, and they look at us. Uh, they said, didn't we throw three in? Lo, I see a fourth man. Uh, uh, and his face is like the Son of God. Uh, how'd that back? on in wicked king know what God looks like cause there's no mistake in who God is uh, and when he shows up even the world knows it's him uh, I'm glad he's our fourth man what a God uh, can I say this our God's full of grace and truth uh, John said John chapter 1 verse 14 said in the word Jesus was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. What a Savior. What a God. Full of grace and truth. Sometimes the truth hurts, but then he's got grace to help us with the hurt of the truth. What a God. Huh? I mean, truth to tell you you're a sinner, but grace says you can be forgiven. Truth to tell you you're rotten. But grace will tell you you're loved. Uh, truth will tell you you can. But grace says you can through Christ. Uh, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I'm glad he's full of grace and truth tonight. Uh, what a God. Uh, there's a lot of times I've, I've seen the, the failing side only be reminded that there's the gracious side. Oh, what a God. Then I thought about this. What a God. Uh, for the Lord is good. His mercy endureth, His mercy is everlasting, His truth endureth all generations. That's our God. I thought about this. He forecast a bright and glorious future for His children. It don't matter how dark it looks down here. Can I tell you, we're only one step from glory. We're only one trumpet blow from glory. We're only one shout of an archangel from glory. Uh, can I say to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord? Uh, can I say it don't matter how wicked, how things are down here. I've just got a glimpse of what he's got over on the other side. And hey, I say sign me up. I'm ready to go. Huh? What a blessing. He forecast a bright and glorious future. Colonel Sanders, you've never had chicken like you're going to get when you get to heaven. Uh, hey, we're going to the feast. He didn't say we was going to fast there. He said, we're going to the marriage. Blessed are they that are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Huh? We're going to go and sit down with God and feast with God. I know there's something here called angel food cake. It's not any good unless you put strawberries on it. But can I say something? Everything we eat up there, the angels will envy to eat what we eat. Can you imagine? God's been working on this place for 2,000 years. Now think about it. He created the heavens and the earth in six days and rested on the seventh. And Jesus said in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive it unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. If he went to prepare a place, and he's been preparing it for 2,000 years, no wonder the Bible says it hasn't even entered the heart of man what God hath prepared for them that love him. Huh? Uh, Miss Mary, I don't know what it's going to be like. Well, it's going to be a whole lot better than what you had in Ellesmere. Huh? Uh, I don't even know if God knows where Ellesmere is. That's why he got you out and moved you to Burlington. Uh, uh, and don't look down on her, Cindy. It's better than Petersburg, too. Uh, trust me, I've heard stories about Petersburg. Heaven's a whole lot better than Petersburg, huh? Can you imagine? No, we can't really imagine. Streets of pure gold, walls of jasper. We don't even know what jasper is. But it's wonderful. Uh, can I say, and that's all the stuff that don't even matter. What matters is Him. He'll be there. And we'll be with Him. And yes, Brother Clint, we'll see Him as He is. What a day it's going to be. And it's one eternal day. Huh? We'll live with Him forever. I say, what a God that can take a vile sinner and wash him and make him clean and make him a child of God and then take him from the gutter to glory. What a God. What a God. What a God. I said all that to say this. What a God. Amen. Why are you walking on your lower lip? We got a God. 
that's real. A God that changes things. A God that can step into the middle of your disaster and bring joy to your soul. What a God. Huh? We ought to have a song. We ought to have praise. We ought to have thanksgiving. And not only here, but especially out there. Because they need to see we've got a God that they need to know. And His name is Jesus. Do you know Him tonight? Do you really trust Him tonight? Do you really serve Him with gladness tonight? Do you really worship Him in spirit and in truth? Do we really worship Him in the beauty of holiness? We don't even know what that means. But do we really, really, really appreciate our God? I really believe this. I believe if we would truly get thankful, we'd have a revival that this world's never seen. And I really believe the key to being thankful is if we would really learn to love Him like He loves us. Amen. We'd get thankful and we'd see a move of God like never before. Can I say there's no shortage on God's end. Amen. So the lack of the move of God is on our end. Amen. So why don't we live Psalm 100 and just testify to the world? What a God we serve. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Ray, if you'll come get a song of invitation. Maybe you want to come and thank him. Maybe you want to come tell him you love him. Maybe he put his finger on something in your life he's not happy with, and you want to come get that straightened out. Maybe tonight you realize you don't know this God, but you sure would like to. If you come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and introduce you to him. Maybe tonight it's just been a while since you really, really, really talked to him. Maybe you want to come do that. Maybe he's done something else for you tonight and you want to do Maybe tonight he spoke to you about going and telling somebody you love them or you're thankful for their, for their service. Or God. I don't know. I know this. We just need to mind the Lord. So they're picking out a song. And as they get one ready, let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for being our God. We don't deserve you to be our God but we sure do thank you for loving us. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and grace towards us. We thank you, Lord, for helping us in each and every day. Now, Lord, there's already a lot of folks in the altar. I don't know why they're there, but God, just help them, bless them. God, flood them with your joy. Do something good for them. Maybe there's somebody here tonight not saved. I pray tonight be the night of their salvation. Maybe there's somebody here tonight Lord, that not only loves you and is thankful to you, they need to go tell somebody that they love them and they're thankful for them. I don't know, but Lord, we commit the invitation into your hand. I ask that you'd bless that, God, your will would be done. For it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.